assalamu alaikum dear student uh, here is the first lecture uh, about the introduction and history of the genetics uh, royal hemophilia and ramanov dna so you might have listened the sir nicholas ramanov too uh, i guess everybody knows about him and he was the historical figure and basically uh, the Russian prince or the king of the Russia. He had a son, his name was Alexis and uh, in fact he was suffering from the hemophilia that is genetic disorder of the human and uh, that was because of a defective copy of gene on the X chromosome. So we know that there are two uh, sex chromosomes x and y and if it is x and y it is male and if it is x and x it is female and uh, female have obviously uh, two x chromosomes and she can only contribute x and male have x and y options and uh, he can either contribute x or y so uh, if the male is contributing y the baby child sex would be male and if the male is contributing X, the baby child sex would be female. Uh, so here is question, the hemophilia is more common in males than in females and why it's so. Uh, I hope that everybody can understand this answer and uh, it's very simple because the male have only one X and the female have two X and the probability that one X might be defected in term of its hemophilic copy uh, is higher than the probability that a person and a, or an individual is having two X and probability that both of them are uh, defected. So for the disease to appear, the both copies must be defected. So that's why the females are more highly unlikely to be defective as compared to male although they can be carrier now uh, power of distribution among the uh, royal families you can see on your screen the edward ford that from the uk then the alice then the uh, leopold and um, then the beatrice so these were the uh, basically four families they were uh, uh, inherited from the Prince Albert and the Queen Victoria. Now in the bottom of the slide you can see there are triangle and there is circle. Sorry, there is a, a one box and uh, there is one circle. So circle indicate female and the box indicate male. And if it is completely colored that means it is the affected and it is, if it is empty uh, or it is the white inside the circle or the inside the uh, rectangle or the box then it, sh it would be normal and if it is the half filled that means it is the carrier and the question mark means we don't know the status whether that is the carrier or defected or normal and uh, another symbol is there small dot that means the dis descend, uh, descendant not affected and that we can see uh, in this uh, the, the, the second column you can see where is the Edward 4 sorry Edward 7 uh, his birth was 1841 and then the George 5, George 6 and here onward. This entire family, that is the Queen Elizabeth family, it was not affected. Or it was not carrier or it was not defected. While Alice, that was born in 1844, uh, sorry, 1843, his family uh, that have full box, uh, full uh, filled uh, boxes 
our circle uh, and half filled circles and uh, there are some question mark that means we don't know about their status uh, similarly uh, the in the Lepold family who was born in 1853 you can see uh, some defected and some normal and uh, likewise in the Betris family who was born in 1857 so the only one family that was 100% clear from this defect is that of the Queen Elizabeth II family so this is the basically family tree of Queen Victoria Victoria that's indicating the hemophilia situation so uh, this degree is more uh, you can say um, expanded and uh, here we can see the Alex who is indicated uh, in this pedigree in the red As, uh, and he was actually the defected child and Alex had three sister and we in fact have no idea about their status in term of carrier or in term of defected uh, child and uh, this is uh, pretty much similar uh, degree to the previous one except that the election he was uh, shown here so this uh, uh, these three slides uh, the the inf these in fact uh, indicate the importance of the genetics and its impact its effect on our daily life how much is important for us to study the genetics for instance if somebody is carrier for these defected genes and we can calculate the probabilities how many of their kids either male or female they would be carrier or they would be defected so male can never be carrier in case of hemophilia that will always be defected one the female could be carrier and uh, why we can elaborate more precisely the importance of genetics in our life uh, as uh, indicated in the previous example it has a pivotal role in our life it can affect other than the disease defects it can affect the height weight or hair color and skin color and pigmentation everything is controlled by genetics people have practiced the genetics for thousands of years uh, based on their own wisdom and that was uh, less scientific and more uh, based on the phenotype uh, for example major crops and animals used in agriculture have undergone extensive genetic alteration or genetic improvement and that we call genetic selection process then the green revolution that was the result of the genetic selection programs in plants Similarly, pharmaceutical industry uh, that is heavily impacted by the genetic uh, studies and the biotechnology industry, the production of the insulin, basically that's the uh, genetic stuff of work because we are getting a gene and we then cloning it and then expressing this protein, packaging, packaging and uh, marketing it and that is the pharmaceutical come biotechnology industry. And of course, medical genetics, one example we have already studied, where you can uh, uh, work out the defected uh, copies and uh, then advise the patient or the carriers whether to get married or not. Well, our organisms, the common thing is they are using nucleic acid for their genetic material, as, a, as their genetic material and they encode in the same way all the organisms plants animals microbes viruses everything they have the same genetic material that's the nucleic acid and uh, this uh, could be possibly uh, a reason for the evolution that from the simply uh, inherited cells to the complicated stuff like human being that's the evolution path and that's that was possible only through the genetic changes or genetic evolution 
Simulate developmental genetics is the classical example how the genes they are expressed on the different stages and uh, they contribute differently differently for example from the fertilization then the embryogenesis then the from there onward the specialization of the cells and tissue formation and the system formation and the at the end the complete organism so these are indicate indicating the developmental stages and this is completely determined by the genetics the specific genes in a specific pattern on a specific stage are expressed and of course uh, being a muslim we know that this is also classically explained in the holy book of quran how on different stages um, the evolution of the human it takes place or how the development takes place and what are its consequences and if the certain genes at the certain level are not expressed how they will affect our lives and today we can see the press precisely the developmental stages explained in the Quran they are the same as we know today in with the help of the modern technologies well uh, the most important uh, thing in the genetic is the genetic variation and that that is basically the foundation of the evolution and that is the foundation of the uh, notion that me myself and you each one of us is a unique person is a different person in terms of its thought its sight it, it's everything is different from the other one and uh, the life on the earth it exists in tremendous area of forms and features. Uh, for example, there are a lot of species of plants, animals on the globe and they are entirely different from each other phenotypically. And this uh, genetic difference, of course, it has the contribution in the adaptation. If uh, we are not changing according to our climatic situations as if species are not evolving accordingly they these would be vanished from the globe so adaptation is the most important part and most important contribution and that is because of the genetic variation so the life diversity and adaptation are the product of the evolution as a result of genetic evolution the diversity is there and diversity basically facilitate the adaptation process evolution is two-step process number one genetic variants arise randomly and number two proportion of the particular variants increase or decrease uh, genetic can be divided in different uh, uh, you can say disciplines transmission genetics the three major uh, sub sub discipline transmission genetics focuses on the individual organism, how the uh, genetic material is transferred from parents to the offspring. Molecular genetics, how genetic information is encoded, replicated and expressed in the individual. For instance, DNA encoding the genetic material, then its transcription in the form of the RNA, the product is the RNA and then the RNA is translated into the proteins that express the phenotype. Similarly, population genetics, and that is basically a study of the group of the individuals uh, of the, uh, in, in any species or in any population that uh, makes the population genetics. So we can study transmission from individual to individual, then the molecular level, at the individual level, and the population level. Uh, and these three are basically, uh, you can see in this diagram on this slide, these three are basically interlinked. Transmission genetics, molecular genetics and population. They go side by side. Brief history, I expect you guys to uh, study these slides by yourself. And uh, the already provided, um, oh, already provided material is uh, uh, in including this history uh, and we just stop for a while so so that you can read these slides okay
in next slide early history written records uh, please uh, go through these slides by yourself uh, different theory about the human birth then the modern genetics okay so again i will suggest you to go through this history part by yourself who contributed what and in which year and what was it impact now finally the uh, what's the future of genetic over the many years uh, as i have skipped the history past uh, a part of the history uh, part of the genetic history but uh, briefly uh, from the simple phenotypic selection and then the uh, selection on the basis of tra traits and then scientific evolution and then the structure of the DNA it came across uh, Boston and Crick they won the model then the mutation different sort of mutations how the was studied uh, by T.H. Morgan and uh, then in the last couple of decades the uh, after the decoding of the book of the human life that is the dna whole entire genome was sequenced it was followed by the sequencing of the genomes of different organisms and today you can find these genomes on the ncbi website or uc davis genome browser or the EML, EMB, EMBL, that is the European Molecular Biology Lab, and the many many genomes are sequenced there. And now the genomic technology is going getting cheaper and cheaper every day. And even the uh, we are going to apply it in the personalized medicine by sequencing an individual's genome. And um, this is because it is getting cheaper and more efficient. And that. Uh, uh, basically uh, gave rise to another field that is the bioinformatics that is the biology and computer the application of together these two uh, sciences that uh, laid the foundation for the bioinformatics now uh, the individual difference within species as i've just mentioned that the technology particularly that of the uh, genomic technology and the genome sequences, sequencing at the individual level, it, it is leading towards the personalized medicine. And the genetic microchips are available, SNP chips that we call single nucleotide polymorphism chips. These are available for different species for selection process, genetic selection. For example, in cow, cow the 770K chip is available in the market. And uh, Based on this genomic technology or microchips technology, uh, the government of Pakistan had funded a national center for the genetic improvement of the local livestock. And I hope most of the students they are aware of that. Now, what I believe, a lot of people say that 21st century is the century of the biotechnology. I don't think so. I believe the 21st century is the century of the genetics. Because, in my opinion, the biotechnology is basically a child of the genetics. So basically this century is the century of the uh, genetics. That's all for the first lecture. Please uh, stay home, stay safe, go through this lecture, prepare yourself. You can get a lot of material from the internet. And uh, of course I will upload this to the channel and you can uh, go through these slides, go through the relevant chapter of a couple of books which already I have shared with you. Have a good time and stay blessed. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.